Let's talk about agency in South Carolina. My name is Alan Donald with the Alan Donald Real Estate Team. To simplify things, we're going to use a sketch. For the purpose of this exercise, we will use the term agent and realtor interchangeably. This is Rob, who wants to sell his home. Rob calls Meg, a real estate agent. Initially, the relationship that Rob has with Meg is that of a customer. To a customer, the agent only owes honesty and truth, no other allegiance. Rob decides to hire Meg as his listing agent. They sign a contract called the listing agreement and Rob now becomes Meg's client. To a client, an agent owes fiduciary responsibilities that include representation of the client's best interest in any transaction, obedience and confidentiality, among others. Meg, who's a realtor, an agent that belongs to the local association of realtors, places a sign in Rob's yard and inputs the information about the house in the local Multiple Listing Service, or MLS. By virtue of placing it in the MLS, Meg is inviting other realtors to promote Rob's home, and she will share her commission with whoever brings her the successful buyer. Meg reports to a broker in charge, the person who is responsible in the eyes of the state government for the ethical and legal behavior of all the agents affiliated to that real estate office. Technically speaking, the listing agreement signed by, between Rob and Meg does not belong to Meg, it belongs to her broker in charge. If Meg, if Meg fell ill or decided to move companies, the broker in charge would be obligated to fulfill the responsibilities mentioned in the contract. On the other side, here come Jane and Joe. They want to buy a home. Like most buyers, Jane and Joe started looking at homes on the internet and found Rob's home. They liked what they saw, so they decided to hop in the car and go for a drive. When they saw Rob's home, they loved it, so they called Meg, who was very nice to them, but disclosed that Rob was her client, so she had to represent his best interest, while Jane and Joe were customers to her. She explained that if Jane and Joe wanted her to represent them as well to make an offer, Meg would have to have written permission from both parties to allow her to be a dual agent, in which case she would be more of a transaction facilitator and less of an advisor. Otherwise, Jane and Joe would have the choice of self-representation or would have to look for another realtor to represent them as buyers in the transaction at no cost to them. Jane and Joe called their friend Jerry who had recently purchased a home to ask for his advice. Jerry recommended they contact Alan, Jerry's realtor, who had done a great job for him. When they first met, Alan explained that since they had not yet signed any agreement, they were in a customer relationship with him and that the law requires a realtors to represent one of the parties in a transaction. So Jane and Joe would have to hire him as their buyer's agent or otherwise he had to represent the seller in a sub-agency role. However, Alan explained, many large real estate companies, including Keller Williams, do not accept sub-agency, given the potential liability that this creates to the seller and his agent. Therefore, if Jane and Joe wanted to have access to all the listings in the MLS, the best course of action would, would be to become Alan's clients, by hiring him as their buyer's agent. Jane and Joe hired Alan as their buyer's agent and became his clients. This would not have any additional cost to Jane and Joe since Alan's commission would be paid for via the MLS as a share of the listing commission negotiated between Meg and Rob. Now, Alan also reports to a broker in charge. In some cases, both Meg the listing agent and Alan the buyer's agent may belong to the same real estate office. If this is the case, the law believes that in order to avoid conflicts of interest or bias in favor of one of the parties, one of two modes of agency has to be chosen and agreed in writing by both the seller and the buyer. The first one is called dual agency. I call it representation light, in which both agents become, become more transaction facilitators and less advisors and the broker in charge represents both parties. The second choice is designated agency, in which the broker in charge will designate Alan to represent Jane and Joe, designate, designate Meg to represent Rob, and he or she would keep the files in a secure place and advise both agents not to share any confidential information between them. 
These modes safeguard the client's interest and guarantees impartiality and above-board operation of the real estate office. This is Agency in South Carolina in a nutshell. If you have any questions, please ask any licensed member of the Alan Donald real estate team. We'd be happy to review any aspect with you.